Perfect. Welcome to another edition of the Red Robin podcast with me, Jarpiad, Chris Johnson, and special guest today is George Lawler. George, thanks for coming on the show, mate. It's a little bit different for what me and Chris have always, and we've always got past players from a few years ago, whereas you're a most recent player. Yeah. First, things first, obviously, we know you've started a young family, you and Grace. How's young yeah. Winnie? You're doing all right? She's four weeks now, them sleepless nights we were just on about. Yeah, I've aged a bit there, but um, no, mate, we're all, we're all doing well, and yeah, enjoying it, yeah. Yeah, good. It's like I said, it's just before we came on the show, guys, just speaking about the transition George and Grace are making. Obviously, you've moved house, you've moved yeah. away from the city. How's it been these past few months? It must have been hectic, mate. Well, we uh, we moved. She was born and I started, obviously, Castleford all in the same week. So, um, it was pretty stressful for a couple of days, but, you know, it was all worth it. Yeah. How's everything been with Cass? Obviously, we're going to discuss all your time at Rovers leading into the exit and everything like that. We've got so much to discuss. But obviously, six seasons at Rovers, bit of new new faces, meeting a new coach in Radders. Obviously, you'll have known him, you know, whole days and stuff. How's it been, the transition moving over from East Hull to West Yorkshire? Yeah, it's been really good. Um, and I think I've said it before. Um, it's like uh, being a new kid at school, you know, going to a different mm-hmm. team and stuff and but no, I've really, really adapted to it and, you know, I'm really enjoying it as well. Yeah, so let's take it back. Growing up as a young lad, obviously, a lot of connections with West Hull Amateur Club. Your family have always been involved in rugby. Where did it all start for you, you know, getting took by your dad to West Hull? How did it all come about, you starting your rugby league career? Um, I, was, I was about eight. Um, went down to West Hull. Um, you know, I, I stayed there till I was about 16, I think. Um, and then I went to Norland Sharks for a couple of years. Um and then went back to West Hull and then went into the first team and then went on to Rovers Academy. Leo Joe. Yeah, the, the, the glory days, Chris. I, mean, I know <laughs> you're a bit star struck yeah. with me, Chris, but now you've got two of them. It must be a good good occasion <laughs> for you. I, I was going to say, mate, I saw uh, Mikey Lewis in the green and gold of West Hull as well. So yeah, yeah. There's, there's a theme running through here, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a couple of West Hull lads, yeah. Yeah, produce the best players, of course. But yeah, obviously... well, they produce the best players, mate. What they did is cherry pick all the best players from all the other teams. <laughs> Don't get, don't get jealous. Don't get jealous. <laughs> but no, obviously, our, you know, 2015, I think we we played about three games at the under-19s. How did that come along about you? Was, was you playing at the time, weren't you? And we did, you know, we've got a new kid coming in. And, you know, we needed the numbers at the time, I'll be honest. And I remember, you know, coming down and training with the lads and getting involved with the sessions. How did that come about? Was it KD? Was it Kev Deaton who got in touch? Obviously, with um, Frank Kenny and everyone. So I was I was playing on the Saturday for uh, for the first team, and then on the Sunday I was playing for the eighteens at West Hull, and I think we had a couple of finals, um, and then obviously Pete Grayburn was there, um, and he was one who just had a chat with us and just said, you know, come down and meet the lads and see, you know, if you like it that sort of thing, and obviously came down, met you all, and that, and yeah, it just went from there. I wonder what Pete Grayburn is doing. What do you know what he's doing now, Joe? Because he was instrumental he's, on it. He's, he's um, I think he's a P teacher at Archie. Is he? Because he brought a few. He was at the, there when he was at the time when he was yeah. bringing a few kids through, and and, yeah. and um, he's probably forgot. You know, forgot about in in a lot of ways. You know, the kids we we've seen come through. Yeah. Um, but he was instrumental at that time, wasn't he? Yeah, it was. I mean, he was, I know I was there a little bit before you, George, but he was the guys, you know, on the 14s training at Hammers, moving all the way up him, yeah. Kev Deaton, you know, the, there's numerous players, um, Mally yeah. Wilcox, all people like that, mm-hmm. you know, instrumental with the club and everyone. But yeah, I mean, it was obviously a perfect move, George. We really needed, yeah. What was your first <laughs> thoughts, obviously? Because even though we was playing for Rovers 19s, you've been playing against blokes. You was, you was bitter faster, you know, more stronger than most yeah. of us at Teens. We I always ask this question. Did you find playing against men from such a young age, especially playing down the middle, did you think looking back now six, seven years down the line, that's benefited you playing in the adult ages from such a young age? Because you can have all the skill in the world, but until you can take a whack off yeah. someone, an 120k bloke who's a good player <laughs> on a weekend and plays rugby on yeah, it. Yeah. You, know, you know, it's tough, isn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, it definitely put me in good stead. Um you know, I think it was I think it was about seventeen when I first started playing. Well, obviously non against grown men. A bit daunting at first and that, but you know, you get used to it, that sort of stuff. And then um I think going on to, to the academy it, it was a lot faster than than obviously, you know, the NCL. Which I struggled with a bit at first. Kev Deaton, you know, then um but yeah, you know, you adapt to stuff and you know, I mean the physicality side of it was you know, I already had that in the NCL, so 
Um, it was just more, like, more the fitness sort of thing. Yeah, and obviously 2015, a real famous year for Rovers with the first team. We did, we you know, we got to the playoffs in the academy as well, yeah. um, before the City Hull, so did FC, and then they said they want enough talent and all that malarkey, yeah. Yeah. bad times. But always remember your debut witness, I think we played Wakey or something the week before to get mm. in the playoffs, and then Rovers were at Wembley the week after, so they was putting the young lads in. I think Darren oh, Hollett, oh, Sonny, all people like that played. When did you find out? Because I just we just turned up to training once. I remember you know saying, "Oh, George, you're playing for us this weekend. He's making his debut." How did that all come about? Because I remember you, you trained a few times. Didn't you were the first team. Yeah, I trained a I trained a few times, um, and I think it was Odd. You said, "Oh, because he was a coach one day." I think he said, "Oh, I think Chesney wants to have yeah. And he just said, oh, I'm thinking about putting you in, in the team this week. And, you know, how do you feel about, obviously, he was buzzing with it and that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, and then turned up to witness and, and scored, which was... A, you did, I was just going to say, I know, old, uh, I know my old man made a few quid on you that day, so did I know he'll probably be listening. <laughs> how was that debut for you, mate? Because I, I remember I was there and it was, obviously, it was a bit of a... It was a different type of game because we knew the week after I was at Wembley and it was yeah. a middle eights game, wasn't it? Was it the first game yeah, of the middle yeah. eights? So a massive yeah. game. It was the first year that had come um sorry, the yeah, the first year that concept had come about. And yeah. for you to play in what probably was such a big game at the time. Yeah. Did it how was that making that step up? I know you got a try on debut, but ultimately how was the game as itself? Did you find you settled in pretty quickly? Was you playing loose at the time? Yeah, I played low. I think I came on off the bench. Um, you know, it's just your first carry. You know, you're always a bit nervous before a game. You know, once you get your first carry, the first you know tackle that sort of thing, you know the nerves go. But I think leading to the you know the build up of it and getting in the change rooms before, and you know I was, I was a nervous threat like. Um, but no, it was it was good, mate. You know, I really enjoyed it. Hmm. I suppose, George. What, do you know when in the build up to that? What what position was you in your head? Was you thinking like? Was you in your head? Was you thinking this is my position for the for the future? This is all I'm going to be, uh, or, or were Rovers trying to steer you into a different position? That, that... Um, well, I've, I've played I've played loads of positions, but um, you know for West, I played second row. You know, came to the academy. Um, you know, loose forward then, and obviously played loose forward on my debut, um, and then obviously got shifted around a bit, which you know, which I didn't mind at all. So, um, you know, like like you say, it's it's. You know, I've, I've played obviously a few positions which I don't mind. Mr. Utility, yeah, I was just <laughs> going to say that about going on. So you fact you got a squad number. I think what was your number? Was it twenty five or something like that in twenty sixteen? Wasn't it? It was in the um, twenty four. I think it was. Was it twenty four? Like, yeah. And that twenty sixteen season. I mean, we've had a lot of people on. We had Kev Leroy the other week, Josh Mantelato. Mm. You obviously all played with. But from yeah. your perspective, obviously. You wasn't a seasoned pro at the time. It was your first yeah. full year in professional rugby. Yeah. How did you adapt with the sacking of Chesey? Obviously, Chesey had a lot of faith in the young kids. I really like the bloke. I know he gave you your opportunity and stuff. When mm -hmm. that obviously, you know, went tits up early doors after getting sacked against Wakey, James yeah. Webster taking over. A real topsy-turvy season, which ultimately we know what happened. So Rovers get relegated. Yeah. Did you really think, God... If this is professional rugby, I might get out now because the first year as a full mate, it was a tough one, wasn't it? What was your emotions and thoughts of that 2016 season? Obviously, at the time, <clears> for you, it was developing, wasn't it? Getting enough game yeah. time, you featured heavily because of injuries, more yeah. than expected than a young kid. But what was that 2016 season like moving into full time rugby, but in realistic, a very struggling Old Kingston Rovers? Well, you know, when I first got the contract, I thought, uh, I spoke to my own dad, I said, you know, I don't think I'll play that much this year. You know, it's a case of just learning and, you know, the players around you and that sort of thing. But I think I played like 20 odd games, mm. um, you know, for, for someone who was like, well, I was 19, um, you know, it was, it was good. Um, you know, it was tough in certain parts. It was a pretty up and down season, which which you obviously know. We had some good wins. We had some bad wins. Um, but no, you know, the second of Chesley, you know, Chesley's a great bloke, you know, he's a great coach as well, but just at the time, it just didn't go well for him. And, um, you know, partly with that that was our fault as well as, as players, which we need to own up to as well. But, um, and then obviously Webber came in. Um, but, you know, I think the worst thing of that year, you know, was the relegation. Um, you know, I didn't play in it because I was injured and that. But just to see all the players, you know, after, after the um, after the whistle and change rooms, you know, families crying and stuff like that, you know, that's that was pretty tough to, to see. And, um you know, I think that was that was probably the worst bit of the year. You know, was the uh, relegation. And at that time, George, was it was it literally sort of rugby league or bust? Like you'd put all your eggs in one basket and thought, right, you know what, I'm going to make a career in rugby league, and and, and that's it for me. 
Well, you know, I, I, I've already got a. So I was I was a mechanic before. I obviously, signed a first team contract. Um, you know, so I've got that behind me. But obviously, that year, you know, I want to put everything into it, which which I do now. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, to say, you know, obviously relegation, it was it was pretty tough because some of them boys, you know, they've been playing for for years, and you know, they've got houses, mortgages, families to pay for, and that sort of thing. And you know, for them to come crashing down, you know, it's pretty sad. How did you find, obviously, the transition from that relegation game? Did your contract just get ripped up, mate, and then did you just get offered a new one? Because I suppose we mentioned about the middle eights, the beauty of that concept was, when you look at the bigger picture, even though Rovers were in the Championship in 2017, mm. we probably, if it was in Super League, would be playing in the bo- the middle eights anyhow. So there wasn't much difference in them two campaigns, ultimately mm. we ended up going up in 2017. Yeah. But for you, was it a no-brainer? Was you wanted to stay with the club? You got offered, I think it was a two-year deal, you was one of the first to sign? Yeah. Um, like I say, you know, I, I was part of that, that team that went down, um, you know, so I wanted to see, you know, a success of going back up as well the next year. And um, yeah, so with that, you know, like I say, we, we signed a, a very good, you know, very good team the next year mm. and, you know, loads of players came in and, you know, people like Scroots and Lunty and them, them sort of players. Um, which which did us did us justice and you know went straight back up. I, mean, I think Justin Carney, Mossy Masoy, there were some yeah. big names, weren't yeah. they? I mean, yeah. it, did you find it tough tougher because the expectations of Rovers were so high? I mean, did, I think we lost about four games. Didn't we? I know we lost against Toulouse <laughs> a few times and then Halifax on the final day. But did you find sometimes you were just going through the motions? Because I remember some days, especially when we was playing on a Sunday after going out on a Saturday, turning up and you was about 13 nil up after five minutes <laughs> going, oh, you should have really just stayed in bed for this. Some of the games, we had, even though we had some good contests, we really thought, you know what, we need to get back up, though. Because especially a club the size of ours, it must have been tough for you guys, especially yourself who saw what Super League was like and then from the space of a year having it snatched away from you but I always think 2017 scene was a massive a vital year and I know Sheen's gets a lot of stick and for everything that happened post 2017 but ultimately the goal was going up and I remember that night out around um what's the pub called Vicky Doc Tavern stuff on yeah. the night there was um, a lot of people I was good memories that and obviously for you to have a promotion on your CV it's um a bit of a positive after a rubbish 2016 mate yeah um they like say you know Sheen's t- totally changed the team and you know the, the sort of the ethos of it all and you know going to going to places like Halifax and Sheffield you know the tough places to go mm-hmm. um, you know especially when they're at home as well so you know we didn't take anyone and anyone lightly you know it was just fortunate that we had a very good team and um, you know we, we all played very well together as well and, um, yeah it was it, like I say it was lucky enough to to go straight back up. Yeah, Joe, Joe we, I mean, obviously, it's a live stream, so we've got people asking questions and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, let's do as we go along, mate, because we've got them on. Obviously, you'll notice, guys, we're on Facebook as well now, so our package that we use, we're going to be able to bring you a lot more content and a much more on, like, a various art with Chris, so it won't just be on YouTube. We'll have a few more outlets. Yeah, it's a good time, because Dan Crowley, you know, talking about Tim Sheens, he says, Tim Sheens arrived at Rovers with a huge reputation. I mean... But yeah, he's back in the NRL now, isn't he? Mm. <laughs> he's done well yeah. for himself, yeah. considering I think his last gig was at Widness and there was, um, what, Championship, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, but Tim Sheen's arrived with, at Rose with huge reputation and despite that, he struggled to win certain fans over as they criticised his tactics and didn't feel our performance was, were over convincing under him, despite obviously getting promotion. In George's opinion, why did not uh, things not work out for Sheen's in the long run, obviously, you know, in Super League, um, you know, obviously when Sheen's come, you know, he totally changed the, the 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 play for us and the way we played, and like you said, the little tactics, little scrum plays, that sort of thing. I think just teams maybe got used to it, um, you know, and started shutting us down a bit more and knew what was coming at them a bit more. Um, so I think that that's probably why 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 that sort of thing happened. Um, so yeah. What was it like for you though, George? Because obviously Tim Sheen's came with a huge reputation, didn't yeah. he? You know, he, he's He's literally done everything in rugby league. Yeah. What what kind of bloke was, was he? Because in the media and, and to the fans, he was sort of a bit aloof, wasn't he? He, wasn't, he didn't come forward with much um, charisma. Uh, I think the best thing is when, when Rovers got promoted, he saw him with a picture of the cigar, mm. uh, you know, and, and obviously he got the nickname of the Wizard. But as a supporter, he didn't always come across as being the most sort of enthusiastic. And obviously they've got to play... You know they play the media quite well, don't they? Yeah, but yeah. but to you as players, what what was he like as a bloke? Oh, he was brilliant. Um, you know, he was, he was very well spoken. Obviously, knowledge is seconds to none. Um, 
you know, it, it, behind closed doors, it was, you know, it was brilliant. Like, like I say, he's, you know, got everyone on board and everyone playing well together in that. And, um, yeah. I think when we speak about Sheen's obviously synonymous with a promotion. So we'll go to 2018, probably the highest profile. I say highest profile, one of the biggest names in rugby league. And of course, Rovers assistant now, mate, a former teammate of yours and assistant coach, Danny Maguire. When yeah. they made that step up when signing people like Magsy, even though he was 35 at the time, as yeah. much as 2018 wasn't amazing for Rovers, but we expected that was it was a new team in Super League. That yeah. was really about steadying the ship, wasn't it? And I think with the signings like Junior Vavai at the time, Craig Hall and Crooksy coming at the back end of the year. 2018 was a really weird season. And for you especially, was that the, it was one of the seasons you picked up an injury, a big injury one in 2018. Was you out for a few weeks or months? No, I was out for nearly a year. I broke my leg tonight. Yeah, yeah. wanted that was the one. Yeah, I knew, I knew the 20 year was all I think but three appearances, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it, was, yeah, it was something like that. Yeah, three appearances and then crazy sent arms and then um, yeah, brought my leg. How was that, mate? Obviously, you know rehab's awful, isn't it? You just want to get back out there. But for you, was it tough back in Super League? Pete Rovers signing players, you know, every other month. We I think we ended up on squad number forty-two. Was yeah. there any worry from you that God, I'm, I'm going to have to, you know, I might not get back in this team? Or how was that working alongside the straight and the S and Cs and being at the ground watching the lads play? Must have been such a tough year for you. Um, I mean, that sort of, you know, that, that sort of injury, you know, it keeps you out a long time. You've just got to keep your head, you know, you keep yourself focused and set yourself little goals, what you got, you know, what you got to achieve as if it's like rehab or fitness wise or the gym or something like that, you know, just to keep your head down and knuckle down, um, you know, just do your thing. And like you say, you know, Rob's made loads of signs, which is, you know, fantastic for the club because it, you know, kept him up there. Um, you know, so I was all for that as well. Talk us through the psychology though, George, of being, you know, You've only played a few games. You've got a long-term injury. You try. You want to be involved with the boys, don't you? You want to yeah. feel part of the camp. You want to feel. Yeah. You want to feel the wins. But obviously, you know yourself. You're not part. You know. You, you're sort of stood on the sidelines. And as much as the club tries to involve you, yeah. you sort of probably feel a bit distant from it. Mm. What's going through your mind at that time? Because it's, you know, you've got the injury and, and, you, and you're looking forward to getting back playing, but. When you're on the sidelines, it must be tough for you. Yeah, it's obviously when it comes to the game day, you know, I think that's probably the toughest part because you want to get out there with the boys and stuff. So I think for me, you know, just keep yourself occupied, you know, trying to get them with the team, you know, offering water out in the changing rooms, that sort of thing, or whatever they need, you know, helping them out, um, just to keep yourself occupied and your mind occupied. It's when you obviously came back from injury, and, you know, Chris, I'll have a few more questions for you soon, mate. Mm -hmm. So, to add more strings to your bow, we've mentioned how many positions you play, you know, prop, second row, loose yeah. forward, hooker. I just want to speak to you about the hooking role, probably more <laughs> on more topic because, yeah. it, when, you know, obviously, again, like I mentioned in 2015, when you could never thought you'd ever play a hooker, whose idea was that? And how, personally, how did you find that? Because I suppose as a player of your stature, you know, you're not an out and out prop forward like some people like Mossy was or anyone like yeah. that or the old Peacocks of the world mm -hmm. and Adrian Mall is. For you, in the modern era, you look at people now, especially in the Rovers team, like Lynette, Takarangi, even Jez for some instance and Mincello, yeah. now he's coming back. If you can play a bit of a utility role, yeah. in the long run, it's probably for clubs, especially now you've found yourself a new one, with that option, right, if there's an injury at hooker, if McShane's injured now or yeah. Milner, you can play there. If there's a second yes. row, now Jesse Lucena Lefeo's gone. Is that, did you, you know, relish the chance to play wherever you can do or was it a bit taken back at first? No, no, you know, I, I was, I was, you know, like I say, I'd, I'd play anywhere. So I think coming back from that injury, um, you know, I just wanted to play as much as possible and, you know, I think there was a couple of times in, in the 2017, um, Sorry, it was before. Sorry, before the injury, 2017 was when I was in championship. There was mm. me and Luntley was playing hooker. Yeah. I'd play for like the first 20 minutes for them for like the defensive side sort of thing. Um, and then obviously when I came back from from the injury, it just you know it was like like I say it was just the same again and played in all different positions, which you know I, I don't mind at all as long as it helps the team out. Mm. George, this might sound like a really stupid question, yeah. but how hard is it for a tall bloke to play hooker? To you know, to reach down and be able to fire out passes because you see, like you know, see Jez, little Matt pass yeah, yeah. on now. They just literally yeah. just fire them out, don't they? Yeah. But how hard is it for a tall bloke to be able to get down and be able to do it at the pace that the coach wants it, the team wants it? So you know, 
How hard is it? I think he'll get back it more than else. <laughs> yeah. Um no, nah, it is tough, you know. You've just I think you've got to be, you know, like a natural looker, like Jez and you know, Parcel, you know, fantastic at what they're doing. Just having that bit of experience and you know, like the self wear that sort of thing with playing hooker and um, you know, it does help if you're if you're slightly smaller and, and not um obviously foot free or so I say. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, don't think so, that's any good. Yeah, so we've got a few more questions coming. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll, we'll we'll ask the questions as we go along. Yeah. I mean, uh, Josh Munro, he's got, you know, it's probably quite a general question, George, and he, he said he's got, he got any tips for playing. But I suppose if you roll it back to, to when you was playing sort of amateur rugby league and yeah. obviously then coming to the pro game, yeah. you know, there'll be people watching this, listening to this, who are you know, might have kids, the kids, mm. you know, they might be interested in, in, in the amateur game. What tips would you give them to say, look, if you want to have a career in rugby league, these are the sort of things that you need to be doing or, or trying to do? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing for me, and I always say, just, just enjoy what you do, you know, because if you enjoy and you learn more and, and that sort of thing, and, you know, just enjoy playing with your mates. Um, you know, that that's the biggest thing for me is just enjoying it, you know. Who, who, who are your mates, George, that you played with at the time? Where at? Well, in the amateur game, you know, if you look back now, are you still mates with people that? Because I think also you'll have mates who you, you haven't yeah. who haven't gone to professional, have they? But yeah, yeah, I still, I still keep in touch with them with sort them of now. people now. Um, you know that they've got different career paths, but I always, you know, keep in touch with them, and yeah. you know, I'm still friends with them, which is which is always good. And um, but coming through, you know, there's, there's a few people, um, you know, some boys that play for FC who, who I played with, you know, like Safashi and them sort of players. Um, so yeah, so I like to say, just keep you know, just enjoy it as much as you can, and you know, I enjoy playing with your mates. Was you in um, Tom and Joe Watson's year and stuff at Westall? Was you that age, George? No, like, I was younger. You younger? Not that old. <laughs> I was going to say not as old as them old men now, are they? <laughs> <laughs> but no, mate. Obviously, it's great speaking about your amateur days and stuff. And we've spoken about Tim Sheens, and I want to move on to 2019, which obviously involves another manager beginning with TS joining. But first, that derby in was it the back end of Jan, February? Obviously, growing up in Westall, family full of old fans. You know, your cousins were Jordan Lane, who was an FC player, of course. What was it like, especially playing in the, your first derbies and so? I know you'd have played in like the reserve ones or the friendly derbies, but I always think that 2019 derby, that Jimmy Carnos try in the last mm. minute, in the next 10, 15 years, you'll probably never see a derby that'll be finished no, no. on Farmel Hoot. I know this yeah. one at the um, at City's ground earlier in the year was nearly done. Obviously, Laney getting the um, charge down from the drop goal attempt. Yeah. But what was your thoughts? Because at the time, I remember with the orange ball, I remember Jez yeah, playing for all and stuff well, like that. that. It was going to get called <laughs> off. But yeah. what was your memories of that day? Especially, you know, when they do that big eye kick from Drinkwater, Danny Addy across yeah. Maguire and then Jimmy Carnos. What an atmosphere and just a great start to the season. Yeah, well, it's always electric, in it, when, when the dive is at, at, at KR? But I could just remember, obviously, I, I took the ball in before they, they kicked it. It was literally, obviously, seconds on the clock. Um, they kicked the ball and it was like in slow motion, that sort of thing. Mm. I was just looking at the ball and they obviously got tapped back and then Magsy passed it to was it Jimmy won it was it Jimmy yeah yeah or did Jimmy, Addy get yeah. it someone like Addy passed it to Magsy and then Addy passed it to, to yeah that's it yeah to, to, to Jimmy yeah and then obviously it went over but we didn't know he scored it at first obviously everyone was everyone was cheering and stuff and obviously the FCA lot was mourning um, and then when it went to the screen it was just it was just fantastic mate it was brilliant you know everybody shouting and, and everything else it was, it was brilliant yeah how did you all out? sorry Chris you go mate yeah, I was going to say, obviously, you, you know, you sign for Cass, you've got your own derby now against Wakefield, and yeah. Steve Bucknell's asked, we'll you miss the whole derby. I suppose my question is, is some coaches try and play the derby down, so they try and calm you down. Other coaches will try and build it up and make you get yeah. so ramped up in that you're, yeah. you're, you're 100 mile an hour. What, what have you found your best approach to the derby is? Because, you know, it, it's such a tough game to play in it. Yeah, it is. Like, like I said, being an old lad as well, it's, you know, it's, it's bragging rights in it for the city, and um, you know I always get up for it. You know, probably a little bit more than, than anything else than when it's an old derby. Um, but like I say, you know, for Castleford as well, you know, with the, with the boys and that yeah. we're playing with there from Castleford, you know, you need to learn off, you know, the, the passion they have and that, and you know, take it into to Castleford and Wakefield as well. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So when you play a derby, George, do you, do you find that um, do, do some coaches try and treat it like a normal game? Or does some, or, or does it get ramped up just because you just know that there's more importance on it? Um, I think I think the coach knows. You know, I don't matter what coach you are. I think the coach knows that it's an old derby, and you know, yeah. it's it's 
well, every game's a must-win game. Um, but I think there's just that extra bit of bit of uh, bit, bit of tinge in it there. So as players, you know, we all know, and people coming in, you know, they get to know from us, us old lads and um, you know people around them and the social media and that sort of thing. So there's, it's always a good buzz, and you know, going into the game. Um, have you have you found George when you're just walking around, just doing your day-to-day stuff that people are saying to you, you know, come on, George, you know. Do whatever it takes, you know, giving you a nudge, saying, you know, just make sure you win whatever you do. Yeah, there's a couple of times. It's more <laughs> friends than that, you know, because obviously they're, they're split as well. So it's more of a sort of a, a, a backhander from them, you know, to say, you know, get the win and that sort of thing. Oh, but um, yeah, it's 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 a it's a derby, so, you know, you need to get up for it. Yeah, definitely, mate. And obviously, like I mentioned, being cousins with Laney and stuff, big family, mainly black and whites, aren't they? I mean, your yeah. dad played a few times for Rovers, didn't he? The Colts yeah, yeah. Penny. But yeah, yeah, your family, I mean, you know, at the time growing up, you know, coming over from West Stoll, was some um, hard to adapt for some family members? Some of them, yeah. Some yeah. of them, but you just got to take it, haven't they? <laughs> they have. They have indeed, mate. But yeah, mentioning coaches and everything, obviously 2019 did see the departure of Tim Sheens. And on a bit of an interim basis, probably we didn't expect him to still be here now. Tony Smith, what was your first impressions? Obviously, we're going to speak about the COVID year and then this successful 2021. But when you when he first came in, obviously he'd been out the game, he was doing motivational speaking, he kind of fell out yeah. of rugby, um, love with rugby league, he said. When he came in, was it kind of a bit of a reality check or was he kind of like calm, composed, look, I'm just here to steady the ship? What was Tony's approach when he first joined? Obviously, first game of victory against Warrington was perfect, yeah. but did you see changes right from the start in just his way of attacking and defending? Yeah, I mean, with Tony, you know, he gets everyone on board and, you know, he wants everyone to work together and stuff like that and, it's the little things with Tony, you know, effort, that sort of thing. And he just brought that in, you know, from day one. You know, like you said, last year as well, you know, you could really see that all the boys were really digging in for each other. And um, But for that 2019 season, yeah, he's, he's, he just wanted the effort there and, you know, everybody working together. I, I, think, I suppose it's, it's an hard thing with Tony Smith, isn't it? Because a lot of people now associate him just being a sort of, being a motivator, you know, someone who can get the players going and stuff. But actually, his tactics... You know, he's a bit of a tactician, isn't he? he he's yeah, yeah. Doing, you know, and I suppose what I'm saying is probably been uh, a bit disgenerous to him because he's had such a long career in rugby league, yeah. Great Britain. You know, he, he's been there around it and done it. And Joe's quite right. He, he sort of fell out of love with the game and stuff and he's come back to Rovers and he, he seems to have found his love again. But he's not just a motivator, is he? He, he, he knows the game and he knows yeah, how he knows to... His, yeah, he knows his stuff. You know, you've got Magsy there as well and Oji and Stan as well. They know the game inside out, so... You know, I've got a real good combination down there. What's the dynamics like, George? Because you get Tony Smith, obviously, head coach. You get Danny Maguire, one of the Super League's best players. Dave Hodgson's one of Super League's, yeah. you know, probably all-time wingers. What's the dynamic? Stanley Jean probably pops up with his input, you yeah. know. I bet I bet there's loads of people who are putting their input into what you should be doing. Yeah, well, they're all, you know, they're all on the same <laughs> They're all on the same level, mate. You know, they're, they're all working well with each other. And, um, like you said, Oji and, and Magsy. You know that, like I say, that they know the game inside out, and Stan, you know, is good for the defensive side. And Tony has an overall on it all, and um, like you say, he's, like you say, he's, he's knowledgeable as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's it's good down there, yeah. Yeah, they're a bit like the Fab Four at the minute, aren't they? I think they work really well together. I'm looking forward to seeing how we go again, but. We speak about 2020 and obviously you don't really want to dwell on it because it was crap for Rovers on and off the field. That fair, you know, the friendly against Wakey, obviously more known now for the Mossy incident. Mm. What was your thoughts? Because like I said, I remember commentating on the game, I've said it before, and trying to fill for 25 minutes while the bloke was in front of us, this big, lovable rogue who you mm. see smashing people about who physically yeah. didn't move for 25 minutes. Mm. And you'd, I did, we didn't really know what was happening. Obviously, the game yeah. carried on. I remember being yeah. in the press at the end and Chesley saying, we hope he's all right. And then yeah. the realisation of thinking this is going to be quite bad. What what's your you know remembering of that day? Because obviously it was such a dark day, mm. but we we like we like to speak about because we know now how much money we've raised. The same as Burrow with M and yeah. it's great. What Simfield's doing, two heroes of the game. What a rubbish start to twenty twenty. We felt so low as fans. What was mm. you like in the camp? It must have been horrendous for you guys. Yeah, it was tough. Um, you know, obviously what the day happened to Mossy. You know that that was a pretty tough as well. And. Be, obviously, be, going to see him in that in hospital and that sort of thing, and then going back to training and seeing all the boys. You know, there was, it was all it was pretty hard at first, and obviously, COVID and that happening as well. It was a um, pretty tough year for everybody involved, and 
Um, but you know, it was great to see Mossy on the mend and you know the fight what what he's shown and you know he's just unbelievable. He's inspirational to everybody, isn't he. Um, but yes, but like I say, you know the the results towards the back end of the season. I think we had a decent decent win against Wigan, um, and then there's just a couple of couple of games what just fell out fell out of our um, out of our hands. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough time, isn't it? I mean, the, the, yeah. that season there was a lot going on, wasn't there? There was yeah. a lot in the background, and 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 mm. I think sometimes people forget that. Um, yeah, you're professional rugby league players, but also yeah. you're just people. You know, and we was all affected by COVID, was all affected by the stuff that uh, happened with Mossy. So it's a really tough time. And, and I suppose sometimes it galvanises you, doesn't it? And, and you see the, um, you know, you see what happens to people and it strengthens you and, and, and creates resolve in yourself because it's, uh, like I said, it's a tough time for, for everybody. So, um, but it's great to see Mossy now. He, obviously, he's back in, in Australia and he? he's gone back yeah. home. And, and the club have really got behind him. And, and not just the club, but rugby league is in yeah. whole, aren't they? they? They've really got behind Mossy. In, in, and Rob Burrows, you know, we see the amazing stuff that Kevin Sinfield's doing. And for me, that just that's why we love rugby league because, mm. you know, we, we, we batter each other, you know, the derby, rivalries and all stuff. But actually, when it comes to it and people got to put their hands in the pocket, nobody moans about it. No, they don't, mate. They don't, and it's fantastic to see that everybody, you know, chipping in and helping, helping those guys as well. And you know, it's it's nice to see. How did you find twenty twenty with COVID and stuff, mate? Because obviously it was awful <clears> for <throat> us. You know, literally was at work for a few months, and you know, yeah. just being at home all the time. But for you guys having to play, I mean, it got stupid playing the derby in St Helens, playing yeah. Yorkshire teams in Warrington on a Tuesday yeah. morning and stuff. Like it was such a weird. I remember doing one of my PE lessons and watching you against Salford. It was an um, afternoon. It was Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Hey George, you didn't get you didn't put your hand up to get fair load, did you? It was that an option at the time? Yeah, you should have. Yeah, you should have been fair. Just chilled at home for a bit. <laughs> How was it playing with no fans? It must have been awful. Yeah, it was a weird one. Yeah, it was a weird one. Yeah. like obviously when you're playing, um, you can't really hear, hear much. You know, with the fans and stuff like that. But obviously, with no fans, you can hear what everyone's saying and what sort of moves they're doing and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, it was weird. It was weird at first, and obviously, like you say, going to St Helens and Warrington and. You know, sometimes we're getting back in like till three o'clock in the morning, um, and they'd be like late kickoffs. I think we played Huddersfield. We were meant to kick off at like it might be, in, well, it might be in about four o'clock. We were meant to kick off, and it got pushed back to like seven. Oh, they were doing the COVID test, wasn't it? Was it Huddersfield? Some, yeah, some it the players might have like had that. COVID or something. Yeah, there was just long days, you know. Yeah, traveling there. I think we was playing the old, obviously the old derby in St Helens. That was um, yeah, it was a long day. I always remember when we spoke to, obviously, we've had Jenna Brooks on the podcast, mate, and she mm. said she was obviously one of the lucky ones to be going to all these games. And she said just the the collision of the hits, like you don't appreciate it, how much you guys put on the line until mm. you probably hear it without the acoustics of the fans yeah. and stuff like that. And it was tough for us, wasn't it, Chris? I always remember watching the games and the Sky Sports bloke who was obviously pressing the button when a try got scored, pressing it about 20 seconds later. So there was taking the conversion kick and then a big roar would come up on your screen. But <laughs> yeah, it was it was tough, wasn't it, Chris? I didn't enjoy 2020 for a whole never reason. Never mind missing Rovers for eight, nine months. Even no, and I think we were kidding a bit because Sky were pumping in crowd noise as well, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but obviously, I mean, George, did, did it feel... I, I suppose it's hard because, you know, being a professional rugby league player, but is it easier to get up for a game when you've got a crowd backing you opposed to when you've got a, nobody in the ground and, and you're trying to... So of does do, are you relying on the players to get your, you, you, yourself going? And I suppose the next question I'm going to ask you is how important was... Sean Kenny Dowell in being able as a captain to lead you and 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 generate an atmosphere within the camp. Mm. Um, yeah, you know the, the crowd does does help. Um, you know we, we spoke about it when the COVID times was happening. You know, you need to generate your own atmosphere and you know because you haven't got the crowd there to to you know add that ten percent sort of thing. So, um, like with with SKD as well. Um, you know he's. he's Got a loud voice in the change rooms, and you know he really stares on as well. So um, you know he was fantastic last year, and um, you know I'm, I'm sure he'll be fantastic again this year. Yeah, we've got a question coming in from uh, Alfie Brown, George, and he's saying which position do you prefer playing, loose forward or prop? I don't mind. You know, I think the the moulding to to more or less the same position a little bit. Um, don't worry, George. Radford's not, not, not listening to this. 
Jack Radford's not gonna. He's not gonna base <laughs> where you're gonna play <laughs> based on what you <laughs> say. He is a massive <laughs> Rovers fan after all, George. Well, he said yeah, it every he time knows. he's on telly. I've seen it. Um, no, honestly, I, I, I don't mind. You know, it, it don't bother me at all. Um, you know, I'm always doing the same thing, anyways. You know, you just like you say, you just have to do a backline carry on one of them. Yeah, not the best, are they? But um, <laughs> I think like, going into 2021, obviously that's the season we're probably going to speak about in more depth because it's been a successful one. When we signed the likes of, obviously, Albert Vete, Corbin, Takarangi, Ryan Hall coming back from the NRL, realistically, you know, and obviously the season's done and dusted now, as a group, everyone says, oh yeah, we, we think we can get to, M um, to Wembley, the grand final, whatever you want to call it. But... Uh, for you, obviously, who'd suffered relegation a few poor seasons, mm. I don't think beginning of 2021, especially I didn't, that I'd be able to watch my team in France 80 minutes away from a grand final because the first game of the season, watching you against Catalan behind closed doors, seemed a million miles away. But what a topsy-turvy season 2021, getting fans back for a start, mm. that first game back at Craven Park. But yeah. for you guys, what was your expectations? Because we didn't know what was going to happen, did we? Mm. If we was going to even finish a season, how it was going to go, if fans were going to come back. What was your uh, memories of the beginning of this year, mate? Well, you know, start of pre-season, you know, we wanted to change, you know, what people thought of us as a club and, you know, how we play that sort of thing. And, you know, I thought gradually during the season, you know, we did that. And like you say, we, we, Catalan semi-finals, um, you know, it don't get much bigger than that. And, you know, it was, was, like you say, a game away from the final, you know, which I don't think they've done that in a few years. So, um, you know, just for all that year, I thought we built it as, as we went on and, um, you know the the wins came. I don't think I think one of the games was we had to we had won two or three consecutive games in God knows how many years or something. I think it was something like that, wasn't it? I think it was about four years. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Um, and obviously we did that, and then we I think we lost a couple, and then we went on a run again. And you know it was it was just a great season. Um, you know we built a lot of momentum, and then obviously a bit of COVID hit. Um, you know a bit of the outbreak, and then um, it took a bit of time to get back into it. But you know we got back into the stride. If you, if you look back. Uh, George, do you think that was your favourite season playing at Rovers? Um, I'd probably say yeah, that one and, and the 2017. I think mm. um, just the way we play, and you know, obviously we was winning more than we was losing as well, which is always a bonus. Mm. Um, but no, just the ethos of the of the team. It was you know, it's just a great team, and you know, um, yeah, it was it was a good season. And it, just give us a bit of insight, Joe. What what was the game plan for you? What 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 was Tony Smith sort of thinking around where what where you was playing? Was you was you a big minute player? Was you you know because obviously we, had, we like Joe said we had Corbin Sims coming in, Albert Betty yeah. obviously not fit at the start of the season, etc. But but what was Tony Smith thinking around you, or, or did he not communicate? And was it just a case of no, no. Just lining up and, and and playing? No, no, he communicates with everyone. Um, he was just you know he wants all of his players to go out there. And, you know, go as hard as they can for as long as they can, and then obviously when you get tired, you get brought off. But um, yeah, like you say, I think me and George started, you know, most most of the games, um, you know, as front rows, and you know that's what we did. You know, that's what well, that's what we tried to do it every week. At the beginning of 2021, obviously, the back end of 2020, Neil Udgell announced that he was leaving the club, mate, and mm. was, you know, a bit in a dire straits, really, you know, a poor mm. season in, you know, COVID hit 2020. We didn't know what was going on. Paul Lakin came back to the club. I know he's mainly off the pitch, and obviously mm. we'll speak about the contract situation and you move probably next and then some questions again. But have you seen, now that you've moved on, especially, look back at what the club was and the fundamentals and that ethos of the club when you first started and now you look now and what probably Tony's doing and even little things like Craven Street, the rebadging, um, re all the things they do with the kits always representing the city of Hull on the away kit with the Umber Bridge, that connection with the club and the fans probably means more to OKR than most Super League clubs, yeah. if you'll agree. And how yeah. do you think things have changed off the pitch compared to when you first started? Because even though we've had a few lower seasons, we're probably heading in the right direction off the field, probably better than most clubs now. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like first season, um, you know, they want that, they want that much. Um, you know, fans and, and sort of players interaction. Uh, but obviously now, you know, you've got Craven Street, you've got all that sort of stuff. So, you know, which is the club's going in the right direction. Um, but like I said, off, off field, you know, Paul's coming in, he's done a real good job. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure he'll do a good job, you know, in the future as well. Now that you've left, do you prefer the old badge or the new one? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. I'm, I'm not too fussed, really. It's, um, there's a lot of opinions on it, isn't there? Um, yeah. Why would you like, Joe? 
Which one? Um, well, it was my birthday the other week. I got some. Um, I got some stuff actually off my parents. Look, look, look do you know what? It's all right, Chris. Yeah. Do you like? I am. Really, we don't really speak about it, do we? But it's one of them, I think. And maybe Cass will do it in the future. And other teams, they're they're moving with the times, aren't they? And it's all about being yeah. digi- digitally friendly and stuff like that. I know it doesn't mean yeah. much to you players, but I think they made the record amount of sales, didn't they, Chris? With the first day of the rebranding um, stuff. Do you know what, mate? I, I popped into the, um, the the shop at Rovers today, and, and actually, when you see the gear up front and, and you see it, it, mm. it's good. And, and and I think, you know, we talked about like Craven Street and stuff like that. I think what Rovers are doing is trying to set a blueprint for every Super League club. Mm. You know, if you go to Cath, you know, they're on about now redeveloping the stadium. Mm. You know, putting a stand alongside the pitch where they've got yeah. the the training pitch on the side. And and do you know what? I think I think really. Every Super League club should be trying to get supporters into the ground as long as possible because ultimately, you know, it's it, the game, the, as good as the game is, it's about people coming to watch it, isn't it? Uh, and, and COVID showed you how desperate we was to, to come and watch the games and, and me and Joe sneaked into Castleford for, I mean, uh, you know, when there was only 30 Rovers fans there or something like that, we managed to sneak in. And, and, mm. and for me, that's one of the highlights of watching Rovers because... We're just so desperate to go watch the games. So all these rebrandings, you know, improvements to stadiums and stuff like that. I think it, it, it's got to come because we can't stand still as a sport. That I think that the, the, the more we stand still, I think the the fair we'll get behind other games and stuff like that. So it's exciting times. But what I will say is, um, I went to the Rovers shop and I didn't buy your top. I bought one with the uh, Old Kingston Rovers on, so it didn't have the new badge on whatsoever. So <laughs> Old that's <school>. my thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, obviously, we're going to speak about making your England Knights debut and your yep. future in rugby league, mate. But we'll speak about probably the topic I've been most looking forward to speaking to you about. And obviously, it's your move to Castleford. I remember yeah. at the time when um, Mull Daily Mail put it, I was at work. I was, I was took back a lot, Larty. Obviously, was you know happy that you'd got a move and everything, but came as a bit of a shock. When did you decide, obviously... You and Grace, and with your family on the way. When do have you had a feeling for a few years? You know, I want to go and test myself somewhere else. Of obviously, with Radders moving um, to Castleford, you've got that whole link now. So, and obviously, you'll have known him because he was always around in the um, amateur game when you was playing. When yeah. did the opportunity to cast come? Obviously, we know you got offered a deal by Rovers. That's been out in the public. But what was your thoughts? Obviously, I don't want to put you on the spot. I don't want you to say oh, I left because of this, this, and that. <laughs> but what was your initial? Yeah. What was your initial thoughts on obviously leaving the club and probably just a different direction from you? And maybe I think I mentioned you mentioned to all them, maybe it got stagnant a little bit going in the same direction. And you're only what 26 now, aren't you? Still got a lot of rugby yeah. ahead of you. Um, are you looking forward to it? And how did that move to Cass come about? Uh, me and my partner spoke, I think it was you know early on in the year. Um, you know, I just wanted a new challenge. Um, mm. you know, I think that's beyond end all of it all. And, you know, to go to a different club and you know and, and test myself in a different environment and you know obviously a different team and you know that sort of thing so um the move came about was round about is it the march time i think march? yeah i think it was like was it radders who got in touch yeah hmm. yeah there's uh radders and that sports women stuff and and I, I had a bit of a think about it and um you know for a while and you know and then obviously the move came and um and then we found out I was expecting expecting a baby as well so that put pressure on it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think the good thing is, though, George, is that I think a lot of Rovers fans were disappointed to hear that you're leaving Rovers. Mm. But what I'm really hoping is that you haven't had a, a negative reaction because I think people are thankful for the time that you've spent at the club and, mm. and, and the efforts that you've put in. And and I'm sure, you know, if you walk around the local area, and stuff, you know, people are giving you pelters for, for leaving Rovers. And yeah. I think that's probably testament to the effort and the, and the commitment and the this displays that you put in while you was at Old Kingston Rovers. Mm. Yeah, you know, I've loved my time at Old KR. Um, like I said, seven, was it seven, seven seasons, six years, mm-hmm. something like that. Um, you know, the fans have always been brilliant. Um, you know, I've, I've never met a, a bad fan, that sort of thing. So, you know, like I said, I've loved my time there. And um, yeah, 
How's pre-season going, mate? Obviously, you look at it from a cast perspective now. We look at some of the signings you've made. Obviously, yourself, Kenny Edwards, Jake Mamo, Farimo and Fanoa mm. from FC. They've obviously yeah. made the move. Pro probably a bit of a new look cast side. And now Daryl Powell's gone. Do you feel like it's not easier now Radders is in charge, but you're not just the new kid. It's not like they've made two signings and you're, yeah. the new, you're making, I think, was it 10 signings? Westerman, and Sutcliffe, mm. McClellan. There's loads, yeah. isn't there? How's it been? Obviously, don't have to give us anything um, tactical six away just yet you can tell yeah. us still when we're playing Rovers but uh, how's it been your first few days and first few weeks doing a bit of a different pre-season with a brand new team yeah, it's been great yeah and um, like I said they've signed some really good players and you know there's a new Cassier down there as well so you know it's really exciting to be part of and the other boys have been fine and um, everybody's ripping into pre-season and you know it's it's always tough um but yeah I'm really enjoying it mate it's it's um yeah it's real good George obviously England Knights talk us through uh, what happens when you get selected for a, a representative side, and how obviously how pleased you was to to be selected? Um, so we got we got a phone call um, off Paul Paul Anderson. Um, he just tells you the details. You know, you're on the training squad, that sort of thing. It'll get released. Blah blah blah. Um, you go to a couple of training sessions, and they've like a fallout squad, um, and then the, the team gets picked for that, and then you're going to camp. Um, obviously, we played Jamaica on the, on the Friday. Um, but no, it was it was a uh, you know a really proud moment for me and my family and um, you know it was really good and um, yeah it was really enjoyable. You got a yellow card as well, didn't you? Dare to get? Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, friendly as well. It's nearly red as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Imagine that, your first game on the um, at Wealdon Road as a cast no. player. But no, I want to ask you a question about the England Knights, though, because yeah. I think you look at Australia, what they have, like the nine teams at State of Origin, City and Country at New South Wales, you have the Queensland rep teams. How vital is it going into a World Cup year for you guys, post-2022 World Cup, to be going on these England Knights tours, playing the home nations, playing Papua New Guinea, Samoa yeah. Tonga, going to the Southern Hemisphere, because if we want to improve as a nation, yeah. and for the likes of, you know, you guys who was playing, Will Price, Mikey, yourself, mm. um, the Broadbent from Leeds, who you name it, who's going to be playing in the Knights in the next few years, do you see a benefit of going over, doing these tours? Because what we find is the first team play France once a year and then yeah. have to go play Australia three times, whereas they've been playing the best competition in the world, plus yeah. Tonga and Samoa, plus State yeah. of Origin, plus against Australia and New Zealand. So yeah. for you guys, getting as many caps as you can, but yeah. also testing yourself against the emerging nations because there's some good countries now, especially with the laws that they've, you know, the New Zealanders who have gone yeah. to play for their other countries now and stuff. It's an exciting time mm -hmm. for international rugby. You must be excited about being involved with it, mate, even if it's at night's level at the moment. Yeah, you know, like you say, you know, you need to have them sort of like test games, you know, just to get a feel of it and, you know, who, who you're playing against because obviously most of the players wouldn't have played against them, um, you know, so you need to set their strengths and weaknesses and just to being in camp, you know, getting used to all that sort of stuff and being away from the family and, you know, playing playing all the big games and the big, you know, big World Cup games and them sort of things could all be down the line. So, um, you know, just to get a feel for it all, and, you know, it's definitely needed and um, you need to be playing more than, more than a couple of games, I think. Yeah. So have you got ambitions to be playing World Cup Rugby League next year, George? I think every Rugby League player is uh, <laughs> next year. Um, you no, know, but it's something that I'm you know, definitely looking at. And, you know, like I say, but I'm just you know, working hard now at Castleford and going week by week there. Yeah. If it, if you don't get an England one, just see your granddad's from Scotland or something like that. You can do that. <laughs> can't even play. Jamaica. <laughs> Join Kieran yeah, yeah. Ryan, Scotland, big K dog representing the Brave Arts. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any more questions, Chris, before we ask a few final ones? Yeah, mate, we've, we've got loads coming through. And I suppose if we rewind it back and it's quite Yeah, let's do this we, for a bit. Yeah, with George signing for Castleford. And, and uh, Dan Crowder has asked, uh, how was Justin Carney to deal with while he was at Rovers? Um, I think he was one of them players, wasn't he, that he sort of, he shows, you know, what he can do. But obviously mm -hmm. he didn't live up to the... Uh, Probably the billing that he had when he was at Castleford. You know, at Castleford, he was one of the Super League's probably standout players. But when he came to Rovers, was it was it a, qu a question of um, Tim Sheen's not playing him right, or was it just Justin in himself? Do you reckon, George? No, I mean, I thought I, I didn't think he was too bad when he when he came when he came here. Um, you know, he helped out massively in 2017, and you know, he was just strong as an ox. Probably the strongest player I've played with um, and against as well. Um, you know, like a fridge door. So, um, no, nah, I, I thought it went pretty pretty well. Um, you know, he had a real good relationship with Sheens as well. So, you know, that helped. Yeah, my, my biggest fr frustration with Carney was that 
he was great running the ball out, wasn't he, from a kick or what mm. have you. But we never yeah. seen so getting bursting onto a ball 10, 10 20 metres out onto the try line. Mm. We always seem to see him then big runs from, from deep and, and actually, yeah. you know, he could do the job of a prop, really, from when he when he's sort of 10 metres out, he could buy a job. He's probably stronger than, you know, a bit like Ryan Hall now, in a way. You yeah, know, yeah. they're such strong players, aren't they, that, that yeah. really, if you, if you get them burst onto the ball, and I don't think we used him as, as, as well as we could at the time. Um, Alex Bullis, he, he's asked, um, um, if you want a rugby league player, would you make it out of golf because you can whack a ball? <laughs> Um, well, I'm just getting young on golf, so I don't know. Um, I'd give it, I'd give it a try. Yeah, I think. What are you playing off? I don't, I don't have an handicap yet. <laughs> I'm not that good just yet. A bottle yeah. of gauge, no idea. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Nigel Wood. I suppose it's a difficult one, and, and it goes back to um, probably a bit of like a question we asked about advice to give to to young players. But is there someone at Rovers, like maybe a senior player or or someone who sort of took you under their wing and, and, and you really learnt off and passed on tips and, and stuff like that? Or have you always been sort of left on your own to be um to, to develop your own game under the coach? Mm. Um you know, there was there was Benny Kane. Um, you know, when I first came he was you know, sort of took me underneath his wing there and um, you know, he got me obviously for other team for other years, so um, you know, I'd probably say him. He was probably the biggest one, um, and then obviously there was Lunty as well. And you know, there was a few. You know, a few of the old heads. You know, they, they was well good with the young lads, and you know, really helped them on. I've got a question, mate. Um, it says, "What is your what was your favourite game playing for Rovers in your five years, and why?" I'd probably say promotion. Yeah, that witness just game. Full, yeah, just the full build up, and I think we won four on the bounce. Then we had to obviously had to win that, and you know, there's a lot of pressure on us, but. It was a tough game, but you know we we just I thought we just knew that we was going to win it and um, you know and seal promotion. Yeah, obviously you've been, like we've mentioned how many seasons you've been at the club, mate. You've played with an abundance of players. Obviously, that's because mm. of the injury records and how many signings we've made since you've been a part of the team, mate. Who would you say probably your top three? Not probably not favourite players to play with, but obviously as a player you'll see what's influential. If that's winning the ruck, being fast at the scrum, we just mm. see tries defending if they miss a tackle. For yeah. you, who's been your top three most influential players at your whole Kingston Rovers career who you've played with from 2015 to 21? Um, I'd probably say the first one would probably be Bobby Blair. Mm. Um, you know, every time he stepped on the field, you know, I'd give 100% and, you know, I don't matter what game it was, you know, he was always there turning up for the boys. Um, I was just probably... going to say, Jock, what do you reckon his best position was? Oh, Bobby Blair? Yeah. I'd probably say back row. Yeah, yeah, I like to be honest. I mean, I think he yeah. got shunted into half back, didn't he? And he just mm. he did a he's, job. He's a skill, yeah, he's a skillful player. And he looked like he's in a one who could play anywhere. Mm. Um, you know, it was real slow, player. wasn't it? But then he just glad and go. His little dummy yeah, show strong. goes. They were brilliant. He was a strong player. Mm. Um, second and third. Um, I'd probably say the second one is probably Weller. Yeah. You no, know, he was a good leader for us. and you know, he was a warrior as well, and you know, never took a backward step. Um, and then third one, oh, tough one. This good question. Um, see, I played with a lot of players. You see, mm. um, third one, maybe one from this year, probably like a Lynette. One or from this like year, that. yeah, I'd probably say Kano, yeah. Yeah, he's, good. he's so influential and he literally missed yeah. the consistent, I think, his line running, especially another player who's moved from centre to second row. And yeah, yeah. I think along with him, Kenny Dow, right? The real experienced Ed were brilliant for us this year, weren't they? I just thought, yeah. you know, they're probably guarded us through a lot of games. But then look at, you know, Jez, it's been fantastic mm. to see Jez been doing so well. Mikey, yeah. Abo, Rowan, we've got, I think after now that you've left the club, looking at the team, you know, we're really strong in them core mm. positions now, aren't we? Obviously, Lachlan Coop coming in, you know, especially for you guys at Cass now. I think Rovers, if Rovers' is span can click, mate, then 2022 can be as good for Rovers as 2021 was. It, it's good to see the young old lads now playing for Rovers because you look yeah. five, six years ago, Jansen, Fashy, all yeah. them, it was all FC. And then yeah. from you, now we've had like Mikey, all them, all these yeah. old lads. And it's good yeah. for the club, in it? Because that's what I think Rovers need. Yeah, of course it is. You know, you always need, you know, homegrown players coming through and, you know, like you say with Jez and Mikey coming through and, you know, and getting that game time as well, it can only be a good thing. Yeah. I wonder what it's going to be like, George, your first game for Cass at Rovers. I bet it's going to be a bit um, a bit, a bit, weird, isn't it, for you coming into the, uh, in Craven Park and, and going in, in one changing room instead of the other? 
Yeah, I'll give you a tenner to kiss your cat, bud. You what? I'll give you a tenner to kiss your cat, bud, if you throw. No, I think a build-up will be made, but I think once we're there, you know, it's it's um, it's, it's just one of them things, I suppose. It's it's new team and all that sort of thing, and um, yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it'll be a good one. It's um, trying to think when is it? It's like third game of the season, isn't it? I think so. It's something like that. Yeah, early doors. Yeah, so it'll be um, a tough, tough, tough encounter. Who's oh, you? You've got first game of the season. I think it's Salford. Salford. I think it's Salford at home. I think. Yeah, at least at home game. Get yourself into it. Um, Chris, have you got any more f- questions before we wrap? Yeah, up? we just had a question from Cast Fan. I suppose it's um. Whether what what Radford said to you about where he sees you playing, are you, are you going to be the front line prop? Are you going to be doing sort of 60, 70 minutes, or are you going to be a, a backup? At what has he has he had a word with you yet? Not yet. No, I've, you know, I'm still getting to grips with all the training and stuff, and um, I ain't had a word with him yet about where I'm playing. So, um, you know, I'm sure we'll have one of them. You know, in the next couple of weeks or so. You know, just before Christmas. Perfect. Well, yeah, it's been, yeah. I, I think, Chris, what I've liked about this is we have interviewed so many older players where, you know, have played in the past and have left for a few seasons, whereas now it's been different for us. I mean, we've wanted to get you, know, you on the podcast for a long, long time. But I think speaking to you now, mate, obviously, whenever you play Rovers, obviously, I hope you don't pick <laughs> up two points. But honestly, wish you all the best. I think for Chris, yeah. it's, it's in a way, it's nice to... I know it's not nice because we want you to play for Rovers, but to see a lad who's been at Hull, you look at what Hodgson's been doing at Canberra, then former Robins that are going on to probably change the career, have a different path. I don't know about you, Chris, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how George goes at Cass in a weird way. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> 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 no, no, I'm ser- no, like I said, I hope he has a great great time at Cass as long as when he plays Rovers, they get beat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that old that old chest up. But George, mate, honestly, I really enjoyed speaking to you again, mate. It's been great to catch up. Obviously, best wishes to you, Grace and Winnie and stuff. I'll be settling you. in yep. your new home up. Pre-season goes all right. Cheers, and I'm sure man. we'll see you round three at um, Craven Park for a yep. hostile, but mate, hopefully not too hostile for you. But whatever <laughs> happens, mate, have a great season and a next yeah. few seasons at Cass, won't you? Yeah. Thanks for having me on, mate. Cheers. No worries. Thank you, guys, for everybody who's listened. Obviously, we've done it on Facebook and YouTube. We've had a lot more viewers. I've been looking at my phone and seeing all you guys commenting, and Chris has read all your questions out. Remember, if you're listening now on our normal platforms, thank you for your support, and we should have the Adam Quinlan one next week. Qu- quick word, Adam Quinlan, obviously, is retired, George, former teammate of yours. Any words? before? Because we're going to speak to Quino in the next few days and release the podcast next week. Have you got any words on the end? The little man, as you all used to call him on Instagram? No, just all the best, you know. I've- what you know, whatever he does, and you know, I'm sure he'll be brilliant at it, whatever he does. Perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, Joe. I think, I think, I think Quinlan probably one of the most skillful players oh, we've we'll, yeah. we'll probably ever seen at Rovers. Mm-hmm. I think the sad thing is, is that his injuries just he just couldn't get a run of games, could he? And when he did get a run of games, he'd get injured. Yeah, it, it's such a shame because I, I, I really believe that he's one of the most skillful players that we've seen at Rovers. Yeah, it was great, wasn't it? And obviously, guys, if you're listening now, remember, so next week we will have Adam Quinlan's podcast. But thank you for listening with me, Joe Appleyard, Chris Johnson and special guest, George Lawler. All the best, mate. Have a good pre-season. Cheers. Thank you. See you, mate.